Hurricane Milton was downgraded this morning to a strong Category 4 storm with 155 mile, 155 mile per hour sustained winds. Officials say it could still be the worst hurricane to hit Florida in a century. So do not be deceived by that. Milton is set to make landfall overnight on Florida's west coast, bringing with it catastrophic rains, winds, and storm surge. In some parts of the state, meteorologists are also warning that the storm surge could get as high as 15 feet. Joining us now is Tiffany Burns, a senior director of animal programs at Zoo Tampa at Lowry Park. You know, we are talking so much about evacuations for people. I'm wondering what preparations look like at the zoo ahead of Milton making landfall. Well, we started a few days ago. Um, the minute that we heard the storm was coming, um, we started making preparations. It takes all of the teams at the zoo to get everything ready, um, removing anything that um, isn't secured down. And then on the animal side, uh, making sure that about a thousand animals are secure. So we spent about two days moving somewhere between three to 400 animals into secure buildings. When you're moving the three to 400 animals to secure buildings, that's all still in the zoo site. I, I'm just wondering, this seems like a tremendous challenge to try and keep these animals safe in an emergency situation like this. We, we've already heard from people about how difficult it is to pack up their kids and their cats and their dogs. But, but when you're talking about, um, it looks like some cranes there, uh, if you're talking about monkeys, pachyderms, this seems like a different level challenge. Yeah, it, it can be very challenging. And that's why it's really important to have a plan and a plan early on. Um, we have a very comprehensive plan that we check all throughout the year. Um, and after we go through a storm, we'll modify and make sure that um, we learn from each storm. Um, so it, it's not an easy task. And we have an amazing group of animal teams and just team members in general that really uh, work hard to get those animals safe. And, and they end up going in, some are in buildings that they're used to. Um, so a lot of our primates, our carnivores, our elephants, they have hurricane buildings that they go into every single day. So for them, it's not that different. Um, but for animals like our birds, our skunks, um, some of our antelope species, that's going to be very different for them. Can you tell us a little bit more about the protections that you have in place for the staff who have to stay there during the storm? We do have a write out team of about 12 people um, and safety for both the animals, but also the staff is our number one priority. So um, they are all together there in a um, one location. And then when it's safe to do so, they will check on animals. But um, again, their safety is number one. So they have food, water, generators, things that they need to ensure that they're also safe while riding out this storm. And Tiffany, I'm absolutely fascinated about the idea that some of your animals have um, have buildings that they go to that are already hurricane safe. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Um, these buildings, are, we refer to them as their night houses, or if you come to the zoo, you might see the elephant barn. Um, you can't miss it. So when we build these buildings, when we build habitats, we know that we're in Florida. We know we're going to have to deal with storms. So we build them to be hurricane safe. Um, and we also want to, we have animals like primates who need temperature control at times where if it's cold, we, mm. they're in their um, night houses with heaters, air conditioner. Um, so again, these are things that we use all the time, every night. Um, the animals are very used to them for those species, um, but they are large and we do in these situations, we add other friends into those buildings um, like our porcupines, our birds, um, those animals that they may not used to, they're not used to seeing um, in their night house with them. So it is a little bit of an adventure for everyone. New neighbors. Uh, you know, as you're talking about the particular climate conditions that you have to have for some of these animals, I'm wondering how sustained power outages might be concer of concern to you. We definitely identify all of those things. Um, animals that need um, water quality. So we you know, making sure we have generators in the right place, um, really paying attention to any of those animals that need any special attention. Um, and making sure that we're prepared, prepared and that they get what they need. You sound eminently prepared. I'm wondering if you are at all, though, given the scope of what we're hearing from officials, 
still really concerned? I mean, every storm uh, we take seriously. It, this happens to be a very big one. So we have followed our preparations that we have set forth and we have done what we can to secure the animals. So um, that's what we can, all we can do and make sure that our animals and our team members are safe. Tiffany Burns, so appreciate you coming on to talk to us about the animals. Thank you.